do you think this split is? I mean, George Osborne has said there isn't a split, but he would say that, wouldn't he, Joe? Yes, absolutely. Do you think, Andrew Pearce, that they, I thought the idea was they weren't going to lead the European Convention on Human Rights, and that's what people are annoyed about. Well, let's, let's pick up on that reported split in Cabinet over whether or not to withdraw from the European Convention on Human Rights. Here's what the Chancellor, George Osborne, had to say a little earlier. So no trouble in Cabinet, according to the Chancellor. Well, they've only just started. Well, joining me for the rest of the programme, is the Prime Minister going back on his word, if spirit, if not in fact? I don't think so. I think that what's being done is uh, time is being taken to make sure that this has the widest possible support. Yes, the UK leaves the European Convention on Human Rights then. Just reasserting the historic position that there is a convention. I mean, we had the Human Rights Act that, that, that was brought in in order for the courts in the UK to make most of these decisions and then there could be a fine British Bill of Rights. So, in a sense, that doesn't change anything and we'll still be part of the convention. So there will still be the right of those Strasbourg judges in a last resort to make those decisions. The Tory manifesto says the next Conservative government will scrap the Human Rights Act and introduce a British Bill of Rights. This will break the Court of Human Rights and make our own Supreme Court the ultimate arbiter of human rights matters in the UK. But there are people within your party who would like to see ready or good for purpose in 2015. Think of replacing the Human Rights Act that was brought in by a Labour government with a British Bill of Rights. I was concerned during the election when there was so much talk about... The Conservative Party's going. I mean, it may be that David Cameron's not calling to leave the European Convention on Human Rights, but as two not members of the European Convention on Human Rights, Jacob Rees, are not members of the irrelevant. great track what? record on human rights. But what, you're saying well, that I'm that's saying what, what are the Commonwealth Council? Human rights are. Does Canada, does Australia, does New Zealand, um, the United States, not a member of the Commonwealth, but one of the freest well, countries in the world? What do we you do not need a foreign court to tell us what our liberties are. I think we should have. So is it about... LGBT rights, the liberties that we have outlined. This is completely... In terms of what is, what is it that you want to fundamentally change or not have protected oh, that, 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 that's covered by the human rights? It can only be done, really, if you leave the European Convention on Human Rights. We the remain... Human Rights Act doesn't actually mm, materially no, change that no. view on this. Do you agree with Jacob Rees-Mogg that this can be done without losing any of the fundamental rights that people do enjoy here? Or are you, like Tulip, worried that if it goes down the line of Theresa May and Michael Gove or what's reported, uh, to be discussed, that they would leave the European Convention on Human Rights if they were leading the Conservative Party. That it should be the British court that's supreme. It's the British court that's accountable uh, to the British about, about renationalising uh, human rights. Paper tiger arguments that you're putting up, we won't lose any rights here, any human rights in this country. That's not what the Conservative Party is trying to do here. If you don't agree with the basic rights of people living in this country, you talked a lot about repealing the Human Rights Act, but when it actually comes to the crunch, which is pulling out of the Convention... The has sort of said that that's not going to happen, hasn't he? And actually the argument, as Jacob Rees-Mogg has put here, is about a judicial argument. It's not about human rights, it's about who will be the final arbiter. I'll give you the final word, Jacob Rees-Mogg. That's absolutely right. Our rights in this country and by our judges, not uh, by a foreign... Now, was the general election result the most disproportionate in British history? That's what the Electoral Reform Society thinks. But why do they think it? Well, let's start by looking at the result in detail. Chief Executive of the Electoral both of you. I mean, the British electoral system, Katie Goss, is based on constituents voting for an MP to represent their constituencies. And of 650 of them, just one decided that it wanted a UKIP MP to represent them in Parliament. UKIP campaigned, people voted. There's nothing unfair in that. Uh, what our report launched in constituencies, so if you're in Thanet or Thurrock, for example, where there were close contests uh, with UKIP, they voted for a Conservative candidate. I mean, they didn't look at the breadth of the votes across the country or the UK. They voted for a Conservative candidate rather than a UKIP one. Well, I mean, you're absolutely right to suggest that a, a lot of people are being forced under our current system to vote for the person they don't truly believe in. We did some research in the week just... Is that assumption that actually first past the post, and it's been proven in this point, got a majority government? And only under first past the post could you have that definite change of government rather than a proportional system which could deliver the same sort of government time and time again. But all the way through the election, and maybe the polls had something to do with that, they, they weren't accurate, uh, as we know, across the board, particularly with uh, Labour and the Conservatives. But they said that, and all the politicians like yourself said, two-party politics was bust, the age of majority government's over, but clearly that was wrong. Well, the system is still bust, I mean, now... Show this actually up on the screen. Let's have a look at the result of the... So, you wouldn't be satisfied then either. 
Yeah, I think one of the things we're missing is, is that so many people actually feel so disenfranchised and shut out of the system now. More MPs for UKIP and the Green under it, these it, results. It, it wasn't a proportional system. That's probably really important. Right. To okay. And so open discussion. Which, right. right is, about which system thing. would UKIP be going for? Because you weren't prepared to nail your colours to the mast to a particular um, system at the time. Are you saying now you want full proportional representation? We still haven't actually come out in favour of, of, of one particular system. We, we absolutely, I think most people need a much fairer, much more representative system really to represent and to ref Really fair that parties like UKIP, who had four million votes, got one MP. It's ridiculous. Yes. Out of concern, no, out of concern that a small party. So you had the Liberal Democrats and uh, right. and the Conservatives, and I people mean, didn't like coalition government. Agree with that. I mean, as far as Labour was concerned, you couldn't agree um, as a party in terms of uh, an alternative vote system or any other kind of proportional representation. Is that still your view? I personally did actually. But what I've seen in my constituency, which was the most marginal constituency in the whole of Britain at the last election, we have to change the way people vote. The young people I spoke to would have voted if they had been online voting. They do not want to go. Myself, I was in favour of AV. Right, and so would you be prepared to vote in favour of proportional representation? Thank you. There are 177 new MPs in the new Parliament. I've got a lot of names to learn. But guess what? The average MP is still a man aged about 50 years old and he's probably worked in politics before. So what's it like being the new kid on the block? Know more about the broom cupboard. What, how... <laughs> I can't believe they used that clip. I said, I said, yes, so, you can. I said so many really, really insightful yes, things. Yes, and you can say them now, but after you've told us about the going in the broom cupboard five yeah. times. Now, what has been the biggest surprise to you since being elected? Uh, it, it, it's the it's the combination, it's the contrast between the two. Th now. I now have an office, and between my two members of staff, I have one working computer. So, yeah. new MPs, you get given the iPad, and then are you told to sort of go off and do your own thing? But, uh, yes and no. The parliamentary authorities. Uh, school, isn't it? It is. Your it's, first it's, day at it's school. Like having, it's like having someone helping you at the first day at school. But. Well, just to make it more intimidating, we're going to do a little quiz. Oh. It's not too onerous, <laughs> I promise you. Tulip, what are you prohibited from ostentatiously devoting yourself to in the chamber? We found out that that obviously ostentatiously doing, you can't do it. No, it is a ostentatiously devote yourself to. How much can you spend on house stationery and postage for your parliamentary and constituency? Aren't you? Oh, yeah. We're going to have to come oh, yeah. back and do this. All right, well, a big book that's about that thick. Full yeah. of it's going to May, you know, the Bible that you have to read. Yeah. What are the characteristics of parliamentary language? Member addressing opposition members and my honourable friend Friends. for your own yes. ventures. And I've just realised, I've been told him, I forgot to say how much you in constituency office. It's £9,000 right. per financial year per member. Yeah. It's a lot of stationery. It there is a lot of stationery. There are some interesting ones about those conventions. Oh well that's yeah. very good. I like the way you're writing your own questions and that wasn't on the list. But I should say anyone as you in the chamber. You've done the honourable member, my honourable friend, chair, yes. and other members should not be addressed as you but you can address the chair and the speaker. Okay. What are you not allowed to wear? 